Lewis Riddick, the ESPN NFL analyst, joining us from the scouting combine in Indianapolis. Lewis, thanks for joining us. How do you separate fact from fiction with Tom Brady? <laughs> That's a great question. Tom does a great job, right, of concealing what his true intentions are. Man, he just lets everybody out there kind of twist around and throw out all these different theories. And teams come and go as far as who's going to be the team that's going to land him, who's not going to be the team that lands him. He's going to go back to New England. He's not going to go back to New England. Yeah, it, it's a uh, it, it's a mystery right now. But I there, there's one thing I do know, Dan, and and that is the people who. I know who would have some insight as to just how what really means something to this guy really does believe that this is this is not about money. <clears throat> this is really about respect. It's about making sure that he has the things around him and people understand what he needs to have around him at this point in order for him to really play at his highest level. And I think that ultimately is going to be where he winds up going. There's no way Tom's going to go to some place that's in the midst of rebuilding something and doesn't have the weapons. He's never going to go through a season like he went through last year again where you saw him game after game look about as frustrated and as exasperated as you've ever seen him look. He's never going to go through that again. If you ran the Patriots, or let's say you're Bill Belichick since he's the GM as well, like, like what, what are you planning on doing? What is plan A and what's plan B? Yeah, yeah I, I think, honestly, the, the best thing for the Patriots and the best thing for Tom is for those guys to really reunite if they both want to continue to win in, in a way that they're used to winning. So if I'm, if I'm Bill, I think I'm probably taking the approach of being maybe more aggressive and more forthright in terms of getting the kinds of players to come to New England that would, that would help Tom the best, particularly on offense, without – messing up anything else that they're trying to do overall from an overall team concept. Cause you know, t Bill's all about the team and he's never going to sacrifice what's best for the team, you know, at the expense of trying to just get one or two players. But I would be, I would probably step outside of my comfort zone and say, Hey, look, we're going to do everything we can. And we're going to be upfront about it as far as recruiting some players that could come in here, particularly on offense and help you, namely some weapons on the perimeter, which is something that all of us could see last year. They just didn't have. They just didn't have – they tried with Mohamed Sanu, but Mohamed Sanu was never going to be that guy. They tried with Antonio Brown. You knew you couldn't count on him. It was only a matter of time. And, you know, it's, just, it's one of those things that they need to be able to get someone out there to really help him, and they need to assure him that they're going to do everything they can to do that. They need a presence in the middle of the field, something to replace Gronk, although it's never going to be like Gronk. They need that position. That position has been vital to Tom's career. And they need to make sure that they do everything they can to do that. So if I'm Bill, I'm saying, look, these, this is what our plan would be in order to try and make sure that we never have a repeat of what happened last year. Because really, for Tom to start over somewhere else, I mean, I guess it's possible. But there's so the, he, the, you know, the Patriot way is so ingrained in him, and he has helped develop the Patriot way so much to a point where I'm just wondering what he thinks it'll be like somewhere else and whether or not he can go ahead and make – another organization kind of operate the way that he's used to, because the way he's used to operating has made him the greatest winner of all time. And that, that would be a tremendous shock to me. I mean, I'm never going to say I can think for Tom Brady, but that'd be a tremendous shock to me and a tremendous risk for me to take. But okay. So let's say Brady goes elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Are you drafting or are you bringing in a free agent? I'm bringing in better. I'm bringing in somebody who. Well, I, I'm probably doing a little bit of both, okay? I, but I, I, I would be trying to make sure I could bring in somebody with a tremendously high IQ that can get on the same page with Tom Quick in a very short amount of time, given that who knows what's going to happen with this new CBA and how much more practice time is going to be taken away mm. from coaches and players, which is something that people are kind of forgetting. Now, look, some of these great quarterbacks get ticked off during the season when their guys aren't in the right places and not able to gel with them. Well, how do you think that happens? That happens because they practice. Football is the only game you get better at if you practice. So you better have the right profile of player, whether it's the draft or a veteran, and someone who can operate again at his level intellectually or close to it very quickly. So I think it's not just about height, weight, speed. It's about the right kinds of players that have that same kind of over-the-top commitment to the game that Tom has. I mean, there's, a, there's, see, there, there's so many things that go into it and so much risk involved for him go, to go somewhere else. I mean, it, there, this really is, in my view. All right. Um, this Tua and the Redskins 
it, 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 I don't know. I mean, it's not a report. It's it's actually happening that they met with Burrow and, and Tua. But could you see this actually playing out if all the medicals check out on Tua? Ron Rivera going in and maybe drafting his quarterback. Sure. I mean, we've seen it before. We've seen we've seen it over you know during the, during history. You know, it's play out that way in, over the course of history that people when they come over, come in and take over an organization, just inherently say it's anything that was here before me is not mine, and therefore I, I'm just going to wipe the slate clean and do things my way. And they get turned off to other players and kind of like rubber stamp them in in a negative way. And I think that could possibly happen to Dwayne Haskins. Rod could possibly, you know, just kind of not take a liking to him, hold last year against him, whatever, whatever terminology you want to use and start over. I think it would be ridiculous. I think that would be totally throwing context out the window as to just how dysfunctional that place was last year from the get go, from the very first time that it was announced that Dwayne Haskins was going to be their quarterback. It started leaking out immediately that he wasn't the choice of the coaching staff and or the choice of some people in the scouting department and that it was Dan's choice. Yeah. You do those kind of things. I mean, what do you, what do you think is going to happen to the kid? You think he's going to always, at that young age, show the right attitude and the right work ethic and the right demeanor? Of course he's not going to. But people just throw that stuff out the window. If they draft Tua and they pass on Chase Young, who I know for a fact that the most important man in that organization, being the owner, loves – I think it'd just be ridiculous. I really do. But we'll see. Do you think Chase Young's the best player in the draft? I think at his best, he is the best player in the draft, yes. He can change a football game and has shown he can change it over and over and over again in a way that maybe not, that very few other players in this draft can do. Joe Burrow can change a football game because of how good how, I mean, he showed that this year, too. Are you sold he, on Burrow? I'm, I'm, yeah, I would draft the number, number one overall over Tua at that position simply because of the fact that he doesn't have a durability history like Tua has. And you could you can say all you want, all things being equal, I would take Tua, and that would be the case for me. The fact of the matter is they're not equal. He does have a history, and it's not just – and a lot of that history is caused by, you know, a little bit by him in terms of maybe just not – getting the ball out of his hands fast enough, getting taking some hits that he shouldn't take, which leads, you know, which in, increases the risk of getting injured. So there's some things that are to his own doing, but if he was, if he didn't have the hip issue and he hadn't had two surgeries on his, on his ankles, on his lower extremities, I would take him over Joe Burrow, quite honestly. Okay. But Chase, Chase is the guy. There's no doubt about that. We're talking to Lewis Riddick, ESPN NFL analyst. You can see, uh, the scouting combine on ABC and ABC special that Lewis will be on from five till 6 PM Eastern tomorrow. Also, when you, you look at these 40 yard dash times and, and I know it's for amusement only in my opinion, but you may think mm -hmm. different because you know, your former player, I want to mm -hmm. know these wide receivers, you know, these guys who run a four two forty. nobody ever publicizes how big their hands are, which I find mm -hmm. interesting. But also the other part is, I think this is more of a quickness game than a speed game. When you need to get to from point A to point B because my quarterback only has X number of seconds to get rid of that ball. I would rather know. I, I would rather take a quick guy over a fast guy. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, by by position, yeah. Some you know, a lot of times, short area quickness is more or less the deciding factor in terms of you being able to win or not than actual long speed. And to take it a step further, there's plenty of guys, as you were alluding to, that are great on the clock, which is time speed, but their functional speed with pads on in a football game is not nearly the same. We've seen it over and over and over again. And we've seen it the opposite way. Guys who don't time very well on the clock, a la Jerry Rice, who goes on to be the greatest player maybe in NFL history. How is because it that Jerry never got caught from behind, Lewis? Exactly. That, that, that's the thing. See, there, there's, there's an art form to running the 40. There's so much that goes into it from your start to your shoulder height when you come out of the start, to your stride length, to your staying relaxed, all that stuff. And sometimes guys just don't feel good when they run, and it just doesn't work out that way. It doesn't work out the way they want. But Jerry, when he got on the football field, Jerry had functional speed. Jerry had functional quickness, the kind of things that you're talking about. And he was very smart. He knew angles. He knew all that stuff. And having played against him a few times, I can tell you this. I never thought that this was a guy who ran four six four seven plus in the 40. He smoked everybody. <laughs> everybody <laughs> so but there's there's guys in this draft at wide receiver i will say this these kids are fast this year 
But Henry Ruggs from Alabama, Henry Ruggs III, is a legit player. He's just not a flash in the pan who can just run a fast 40. This kid can flat out play. Jerry Judy, although he, he – Jerry Judy runs 4-4-5. Four, four, yeah, he's slow. And people are like, he's slow. <laughs> and he's, and he's, he's the best route runner in the draft by far. By far. He's dynamite. So, I mean, it's, it's a quality draft this year. I know the 40 is dominating all the talk. But these kids who are running fast, they're also very, very good players. I think it's the best draft I've seen in 20 years for wide receivers. I love C.D. Lamb. Absolutely. He's fantastic. And he was one of those. I and mean, he ran 4-5. I know. And C.D. On the, on the field, but on the field when you're talking about quickness. Yeah. With the ball in his hands, he's electric. He's like a video game. He just makes something out of nothing. There were two or three plays this year when I watched, and I went, there was nothing there. There were four yeah. guys around him, and somehow yep. he scored a touchdown. Yeah, Texas, I mean, Texas, the Texas game uh, comes to mind immediately. He's just very, very good with the ball in his hands. Great vision, great functional strength, balance, toughness. I mean, all those things that you can't really measure here that really mean the most. This is just a way to kind of get comparisons, you know, on a level playing field. So you have some way to sort these guys athletically. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, you've, you've watched the game forever. You, you know what really matters. All right. Uh, final thing. Uh, the show has a bet with Jeff Darlington. Jeff Darlington uh, kind of reporting that Brady, and he'd be stunned if Brady went back to the Patriots. Uh, a mm -hmm. guy on my show, Paulie, bet Darlington $500. Uh, they, $500 goes to the Jimmy V Foundation, uh, whoever mm -hmm. uh, loses the bet. Are you on Team Patrick or Team Darlington, Brady leaving the Patriots? Well, Team Patrick says he returns, right? Yes. I'm on Team Patrick. Okay. I think ultimately he returns. There's just too many things Tom's used to. Structure, discipline. That'd be a bummer, though. Winning. Lewis, all this talk and then we don't like, – like, there's wishful reporting <laughs> that goes on. Like, we, yeah. we we want something to happen, and, it, yeah. you know, you get this feeling that maybe Phillip Rivers to the Colts will be the big move in the offseason here. Yeah, I don't know. Phillip Rivers – the Colts? The Colts may be in play for a lot of things. There's this guy named Jordan Love who – is creating a lot of buzz around here. Keep his name, keep, keep his name in oh, mind. Oh, I know, I know. Somebody's going to fall in love, Lewis. You know how this works oh, every they, year. They already have. <laughs> and you go, they already it, have it, literally and figuratively. But, but it's like Trubisky and Daniel Jones where you go, wait a minute, where did that come from? And yep, somebody yep. might do that with Justin Herbert or or uh, or Love. I, 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 yeah. so. oh, it, it, it's happening as we speak, believe me. Uh, Cupid's already flying. Football <laughs> flying around here. Trust me. Valentine's Day is a couple of weeks late. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Hey, That's uh, right. thanks for joining us, Lewis. As always, we appreciate no it. That's uh, Lewis Riddick, former NFL player, mothership uh, analyst, ABC special from five to six Eastern tomorrow, live from the NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis.